Hey, what's up? I'm Kyler Murphy and I'm a local wedding filmmaker and photographer here in the Pacific Northwest. And here we are watching episode two, Color Grading with DaVinci Resolve and the Blackmagic 6K. I absolutely love this freaking camera. So go ahead and get your pen and paper ready. I don't wanna waste any more of your time and let's do this. All right, what's going on? So episode two, color grading today. Uh, I'm gonna take you back to a shoot that we were on about a year ago. This place called White River Falls uh, State Park. Crazy, it was about a year ago, right before uh, everything went to uh, haywire or uh, whatever word you wanna use. <laughs> but uh, I wanted to show you both the, uh, or everybody the grade that we have here so um using uh, a very simple just six node uh system today and i'm going to show you how you know we went literally from this uh to this relatively quickly um honestly i really appreciate the positive vibes and uh support uh for my work and and wondering how exactly i grade in the process um honestly i really do appreciate it and uh, yeah, I just want to put it out there for you, for you all, and uh, just just help out any way I can, or just bring some um, some some value to you guys. So um, let's go ahead and uh, dive into this, shall we? So hopefully, I got pen and paper ha handy, and uh, I want to make this short, sweet, to the point. So um, let's go ahead, and we're just gonna delete all this, right? And we're just gonna start from scratch because that is how we learn. So. Um, this first node here is going to be um, our noise reduction. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, label these. We can just maybe just label just NR for, for short. Um, reason I have it, man, I just like keep burping, I apologize. Um, reason why we have it as the first node, just so it sends the cleanest signal to the image. Um, our second node is going to be uh, just our exposure. Uh, so just getting everything balanced and yeah, all that good stuff just brightened up because obviously it's very flat and uh, dull right now. Uh, then we're going to move on uh, to our, what are we going to move on to? Oh, it's our uh, our balancing. Okay, so <clears throat> after we get our exposure right, we're going to balance the color so everything's clean. We got clean whites. That way before we actually apply our split toning or the actual look, we're working with a very clean, well-exposed image, if that makes sense, okay? Uh, from here, we're going to go into um, our um, look adjustment, or sorry, just our um, our color. So we're going to go into our color next. So we're going to be adjusting essentially the HSL, so it's a LUT that I use, um, which just affects the hue, saturation, and luminance of the colors the way that I like it. Um, some have asked to do a tutorial on exactly how I build that LUD or, or why I use it. And I, I plan on doing that in the future, or if it is something you'd be interested in, feel free to drop it in the comments below. Um, fourth node is going to be color. Fifth node is going to be our actual look. And then at the end, we're just going to apply just a little bit of sharpening and we can apply some grain if, uh, you know, that, uh, that works for you. So that's going to be our seven node structure. Now I would like to preface this system works really well for me. I primarily do wedding and elopement work. I don't do a ton of commercial stuff, but with that said, and certainly a commercial setting, you might need to use a little bit more of a complex nose tree and bring in you know, layer mixers, parallel mixers, all that stuff where you're needing to keyframe uh, skin tones and uh, doing more selective adjustments. I think uh, there's definitely a time and place for that. But uh, for me and my workflow, I think this works very, very well. And I think if anything, it's uh, a great starting point uh, for you to learn and really just get a great look out of your camera to start and then take it to wherever you want to go. All right. So let's go ahead and freaking jump into this. All right. So uh, we'll just leave this noise reduction here. We'll just do that at the end. And we're going to start off with our exposure. Okay. So to start off, me personally, I always start off with the contrast because it is a global adjustment. So we're adjusting everything in the image to start. Now, when I'm adjusting the contrast, you're like, Kylan, what are we even like looking for? How much do you even, how do you know how much to bump it up? There's a couple things that I'm looking for. The first is I'm looking at her overall 
hair, co hair color or the depth of that. So you can see that we're basically almost to black and also the way the highlights are hitting her cheek and on her nose here. So you can see if I really crank this up, you can see the highlights really start to become blotchy and the black up here, I mean, it's literally lost. I don't even see any separation between her hat and her hair. So we're gonna bring this back down and you can, again, you can always adjust it later. Like it, it's not like, you know, we can't come back to it, right? So uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, eh, we're gonna leave it right there for now. And then I'm gonna bring up uh, or bring down the pivot just a little bit. And this is essentially controlling where that contrast actually is. Um, and we'll leave it probably right about there uh, to start. So just by adjusting the contrast, I mean, look at like, we're already kind of getting somewhere here, okay? Now you can see in the scopes in the bottom right hand corner that we definitely have a lot of push and pull in this image, which is great, a uh, great kind of just learning uh, clip here. So uh, next thing I'm gonna do is we're going to get some saturation in here. So we're gonna just bump this saturation up. now. One thing to note about saturation, you're probably saying like, yo, dude, this is like way like what the what the hell are you doing to her skin, man? Now, let me just preface that the best part about saturation and cranking this up in the beginning is that you can see your problem areas like where what are the colors in the image actually doing? And it makes it a lot easier to see. So, for instance, like on her white top here. If I left this kind of like lower towards the bottom, normally I'd be like, oh, like there's not really anything going on there that I need to worry about. But the second I crank this up, you can see that there is some kind of brown or orangish tone kind of uh, diluting or um, affecting her, her top there. So um, this is a big reason why I think it's good to up the saturation in the beginning. And remember that you can always tone it back later on, right? It's again, it's not like you just set it and forget it. You can always bring it back down later and you'll see that, okay? So we'll leave the saturation right about there. And uh, if you know me, I freaking love this feature in DaVinci Resolve. It's the mid-tone detail and you can find it on the second note here. We're gonna bring this down usually between negative 25 and 30 I find is a sweet spot. It's just great for uh, making the highlights on her face just so smooth and uh, it's just great. It makes the skin look great. I freaking love this feature in DaVinci Resolve. Uh, then going back here. So we're going to now uh, start messing with our primary wheels. And bear in mind, we're still in the exposure wheel. This all deals with exposure of uh, the image. So um, with these wheels, it's very much a dance. So I'm gonna bring my lift down a little bit. And of course, I'm paying attention to my scopes down here and making sure nothing is clipping. And then I'm gonna start bringing my mid-tones up. Um, I really do like pushing my mid-tones, I've noticed uh, quite a bit, just because I like how uh, flattering it, it makes the skin um, and it just helps make everything really smooth. So uh, I usually mess with these first, uh, this lift and gamma, and just kind of go back and forth between the two. And then at the end, then I'll bring up the gain a little bit to start bringing in that pop, as you can see, right? And look at how well this is balancing out here. So it's just a great way to do it. So you have to, it's just kind of like you just saw me do. It's just a push and pull between the three. Generally, I'll start with the lift in gamma. And then at the end, I'll bring in the gain to get that, that brightness or that pop, right? Um, so just in the first note, I mean, look like, Dude, I mean, we're, we're, get, we're getting places, we're getting places, but we got ways to go here, okay? So this third note here, balancing, right? So balancing essentially is looking at the image as a whole and what is my problem area? And I can already tell you that it's at sunset, so I already know there's gonna be a lot of magenta in the image, okay? So I'm gonna go to my clip, and because I did shoot this in RAW, um, I am going to adjust the tint downwards more towards the green and you can see it starts really evening that out now not a ton i mean it was at like negative five i'm only bringing it down to you know negative 12 negative 15. a lot goes a long way in color grading as you're going to notice like you never want to push anything to one extreme or another unless you're going for like a very selective look then it's like you know whatever go for it right but um in general you know a lot goes a long way uh, or a little goes a long way excuse me <laughs> so uh, let's go back here and we're gonna go now into our offset, okay? 
So the offset when it comes to balancing is same kind of thing that you're doing with the, the white balance is I'm trying to get out a problem tone or area. So again, that magenta in the image, I know that my magentas and reds live up here. So I know to balance that out, I wanna bring more green, teal, or blue into the image. Now, to start, I might not necessarily know where that is, but since we're learning here, a great way to learn is honestly drag this down to the extreme. And you're like, whoa, this is crazy, but it helps you see as I'm dragging this in the bot towards the bottom, how it's exactly affecting the image, her skin tone, and everything in between. So I know here that I'm gonna bring this down and maybe push it over here just to get some of that green out. And it just overall gives a nice clean look um, to the image. And I mean, you can see our scopes here and even in our, our waveform, I mean, this is this is, this is is looking good. It's, it's looking good, all right? Um, so going back here, the next thing that we're gonna do, and you can see just from the balancing, look at that. Like, look at how, like, you don't even honestly see sometimes how much red was in the image until you do the before and after. And you're like, holy crap. Like, okay, that's that's way, way cleaner. So um, we're going to go in here and in the color node, again, this is just um, a LUT that I used um, that just affects the HSL. So the hue, saturation, and luminance of the colors. Um, I can go into a tutorial on this uh, later on, but that's essentially all it does. Just a slight tweak to the colors, nothing crazy. Um, now we get into the funnest part, which is actually getting our look and what we want, right? So we're going to go back into um, our primary wheels here. Um, as you can see, we use pr primary wheels a lot. They're the best. And uh, we're going to start with lifting our gamma up towards the orange and yellows. Um, this is just a personal preference. And at the end of the day, the look is entirely up to you guys. Like at the end of the day, it's art. Like somebody shouldn't be there telling you like, oh, you know, this, I, I don't like this, this, the way this color is or graded. Now there's certain things that I think you should be looking for. I have priorities, especially in the wedding or elopement industry, like making sure the skin looks great. And, um, you know, I think it just overall has a good vibe, but in general, split toning and color grading, it's subjective. Like it's unique to you, right? So, so have fun with it. But for me personally, and the Black Magic, I love the gamma and a lot of my wedding work. I will push this more towards the orange uh, or kind of slightly yellow area. And then I'm gonna bring my gain or my highlights down towards like the blue or pushing up towards the magenta to help sell um, that sunset. And you can see here, it kind of brings that warmth and sunset vibe uh, back to the image. And very much like when we were doing uh, the exposure, this is very much a dance as well. So go back and forth and play with them. So boost the gamma, bring down the the, the, the gain a little bit, go back to the gamma and just kind of tweak it um, till, till you like it, right? So, and you can see a before and after here. And I think uh, this is looking great. Now, something that I would normally do now that I've been looking at this image for a little bit, I'm like, hey, I feel like this could use a little bit more pop. And so I'm actually gonna go back to my exposure and I'm gonna mess with this a little bit. So I'm gonna raise up the, the gain cause I just personally want it to be a little bit brighter, a little bit more uh, punchier without doing anything too crazy. Um, and I think we're gonna go right there. Um, yeah, that looks good. I like that. Just, I think it just needed just a little bit more, a little more brightness to it. Okay. So now we're going to go down to our sixth node and we're just going to apply some sharpening, sharpening. You can find um, this icon right here. And we're just going to bring this down to like 0 0.47, 0 0.48, I think is a perfect sweet spot for this. And then we can of course grab a little grain, right? I mean, who doesn't like a little grain? Again, personal preference. Do you have to add it? No. Um, but you know, it, it adds a little bit more of a aesthetic uh, to your image. So we have that there, we got the grain. And then our final node, we're gonna just put in a little noise reduction. And again, with noise reduction, um, I could make a whole like tutorial on this, but um, in general, I find this this works great. Um, just frames essentially is how many frames it's it's selecting or getting the sample from. I just personally use the faster and then the temporal threshold a little goes a long way with this guys. Like 
I there's very few clips that I'll push above like 10. Um, and as you can see, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this on YouTube with the compression, but um, just like just pushing it up like to six and doing a before and after. I mean, look at the difference. Like, I mean, that's all you need. I mean, it's crazy. And then um, Black Magic definitely with their noise is kind of guilty of getting this kind of digital color noise. So a good way to get that out is on the spatial threshold, uncheck this box. And we're just gonna raise up our chroma a little bit. And you can see just how much that cleaned that up. And I mean, look at the before and after and then add in the grime. I mean, it just, oh, it looks so good. So, um, so here we are. So here's before and here's after. And this is exactly how I grade my um, wedding work and then just diving in here. So we'll turn all these off. And so we first started off with our, oops, <laughs> selected there. So first started off with our exposure and uh, you can see, you know, we got a, a very good tone and now we're going to dive into getting this balance. So we took out the magenta, the red in the image, and you can see it overall gave it a little bit more of a clean look. I'm going to apply my color node just to kind of adjust some of the hue, saturation, luminance of the colors. We're going to apply our look to get that vibe. Look at that. Very clean. Um, that's just personally what I like. And then, of course, apply a little sharpening and grain and boom, you are good to go. All right, so um, thank you so much for watching. And um, yeah, this is, uh, this, is, this is my color grading process and uh, in episode two, so thanks guys. Well, if you're seeing this, it means you made it to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully you got some value out of it. I plan on releasing a lot more of these videos um, in the future uh, just to help out the community because I really do feel there's a big need out there now with uh, the way camera technology is progressing and being able to shoot log footage and raw footage with all these new cameras that I think there's a real need and uh, for uh, color grading and uh, you know learning the steps and uh, maybe the right way to approach it and, and some wrong ways uh, to go about it. So uh, again, thank you so much. If you found value in this, please like and subscribe down below. And until the next one, thank you all.